Hello everyone, I'm Colin Connett. Today it's part three on how to save money buying wood and the topic today is buying direct from the mill. Now I can tell you I have no hope of giving you 40 years of experience in buying wood uh, in a few eight minute videos uh, but what I will give you is a good grounding with this video uh, and with the other ones so I hope you'll enjoy that. Now I know that not everybody's uh, available for buying wood from a mill. Um, sometimes it's too much for people, but you know what? You can do group buys too. If you can get together with some other people, maybe you can join together and, and make a quantity buy. But like anything, there's pros and cons to buying wood from a mill. And the good parts are you're going to get a variety of cuts of wood. You're going to get rifts on, flats on, quarter sawn. Uh, you're also going to be purchasing wood at a cheaper price because you're getting it direct from the mill. Now, the, on the bad side, on the cons, there's a few things that you need to be aware of. First of all, the wood's going to be green because you're buying it from a mill. So it's going to be at some state of wetness so it's going to have to be dried. Um, the wood's going to have all sorts of cuts in it. It's not likely going to have been sorted. Um, you're also going to need to haul it home. You're going to need to store it somewhere. You're going to need to monitor the drying because the wood's going to be too wet to use right away. Uh, and it will almost always be riff or uh, sorry rough cut um, so it's going to need to be planed and jointed at some point um, and you need to be aware that not all mills are going to sell to the general public so you'll need to call them ahead of time and you know what if you show up at a mill and you're looking for one or two boards you're at the wrong place because they're really only looking for selling a quantity uh, and giving a discount for that now the first thing they're going to ask you when you call a mill or when you show up at a mill, they're going to ask you how much wood are you looking for? So you're going to need to know that answer, you know, your, how many board feet or how many boards or a, you know, a half truck load or a half van load or something. Um, so you're going to need to give them an idea and that way they'll be able to help you pick out the best wood. Now there's three kinds of mills. Large mills, and usually a large mill will also have a kiln. Uh, and for those of you who haven't seen a kiln, this is what a kiln looks like at a large mill. Uh, and there, the mill itself is usually all enclosed, so there's really not much to see. Uh, Medium-sized mills may sell to uh, individuals, uh, but probably where you're going to end up at is a mill like this, a small little mill that has a, a like a portable bandsaw, uh, and they likely will have some kind of a little inventory of wood as well. They may have a decent uh, inventory of wood, and that's probably what you're going to be selecting from. Now, whatever the wherever you end up, whatever mill you end up with, the, the wood that you're going to be looking at is likely going to be what we call stacked and stickered. And that means it's stacked horizontally, it looks just like this, um, and it's got stickers, what we call stickers, which are just little pieces of wood between all the boards, and that's to let the air flow through to help the wood to uh, dry out. Uh, and they use the same method when they put the wood into the kilns. Now, the wood that a, a mill will get, uh, when they buy a log or when they bring a log in, they're usually 25 to 40 percent moisture content so that's what they're cutting at. <laughs> As woodworkers we like to be closer to 9 percent so you can see that there's a, a awful lot of water that needs to get rid of in that tree. Now if the mill has already cut and stacked and stickered the wood it will have dried to a certain amount uh, so you may be getting it where it's already dried a little bit but as a rule um, you will be getting you will be purchasing wood that's still 14 percent or more and when you get that wood home uh, you'll have to determine whether you need to let it dry some more outside or whether you can actually bring it inside because we need to eventually in most cases we need to try and get that wood down around nine percent for most woodworking and furniture making projects. Now if you don't have a moisture meter now would be a great time to get one because you're going to need one if you're going to purchase any lumber from a mill because you're going to need to monitor the moisture content. Uh, 
So I'm going to take a moment now and go through some of the wood here that I purchased on my last uh, visit to a mill. Now, first of all, what you will get in a mill that you typically won't get from a lumber store um, is some live edge. Now, this one's pretty rough here, but it just gives you an example that you can get live edge lumber direct from a mill, more so than you can from the lumber store. Now, when you buy lumber from the mill, you're going to, in most cases, you're going to be getting rough lumber, and you can see that this is rough and it's quite thick. This is probably almost an inch thick. There's a three quarter inch board beside that so you can see you actually waste a fair bit of material there uh, and sometimes I use that and I cut the strips for different things but um, the wood you get might not be quite as thick. So it's going to be rough sometimes when you get the wood as it's drying it's going to warp. That's the nature of wood. Uh, the other thing is when you're purchasing wood watch for uh, ask the mill if they end seal. Most do not. Some do but when you end seal you can see that um, this one here there's no cracks in it. If they don't end seal you will get cracks and you can see this one here is cracked. Now that's this one is end sealed but you know what you, this one's going to crack anyway and the reason is because all of these, look at all of these knots in this area. Uh, this board had no hope of not cracking. Now if it was not, if these were not end sealed there would likely be two or three or four cracks and sometimes they will bleed up the board so that makes almost, uh, in this case, almost a board foot of unusable wood here uh, and the same with this one, you know, it's probably three quarters of a board so you don't want to be paying for that so you're going to have to watch for that so your board foot measurement is probably if the wood's cracked or if it's not sealed your board measurement wants to start here and and carry on down the board. You, you don't want to be paying for wood that's going to be cracking, it's going to be useless. Um, so it's just something that you need to watch for. Now this one cracked after and this one's not a bad crack because it's toward the center of the board so I could actually cut that and use two have two pieces of wood here so it's not a, a, a total loss but the other reason I wanted to show you this board is the other thing you want to be looking for is defects in boards and this one has got it's loaded with knots so this one is not really a good board if I looked at the actual square board footage of this board uh, this area here is good uh, and then there's like a little strip up there so this part down the middle here uh, it's got knots that are already cracking and checking, um, probably not good. So all of that stuff reduces how many board feet. And usually the, the sawyer at the mill is going to know that and they'll look at a board like this, uh, that's a, you know, this is a good solid board for example, uh, and you'd probably pay end to end. Now sometimes what they'll do is they'll, they'll take a cross section, they'll say yeah there's a few of them that are split in the end, a few that are not. Um, because we're giving you such a discount we're not going to worry about a few splits here and there we just do sort of a bulk purchase so um, there's all sorts of different ways of buying wood and, and sawyers and, and mill owners have different ways of doing it but you need to be aware before you walk through the gates of the kind of things that you might be looking at now the other thing to be aware of when you're now, when you're picking wood, now you're probably not going to be able to select wood uh, according to uh, the pattern. So for example here I have some, this is a flat sawn board here uh, and this is a, a, a quarter sawn and a flat sawn and you can see that this was actually sort of the center of the tree right here and they've cut this piece out of it but in this that very end that's a quarter sawn board now I couldn't find an actual quarter sawn board when I went through my stack uh, but that's a quarter sawn board and this now becomes flat sawn and there's also this is this very end one here that's actually rift sawn what we call rift sawn but you're going to when you get a, a stack of wood you're going to get a little bit of everything in it but when you're going through that stack you can sort this yourself and when you find some quarter sawn wood you want to set that aside 
because that's special wood and the reason it's special is it's more stable it it's there's less tendency of it to twist um, it, it it has the nicest grain it's the most stable and this kind of wood here this is what we like to use for tabletops and things like that very nice stable wood the rest of this we can use this and cut it uh, and make it for all sorts of different elements of furniture but uh, the quarter sawn is really the premium if you were in a, a lumber store um, and they had the wood separated you would be paying more for quarter, quarter sawn wood uh, than you would for rift sawn or flat sawn. Now the other thing to watch for uh, when you're selecting wood or when you're picking the wood from your pile and looking, looking at the wood, you often don't get a real good chance to look at the wood until you're pulling it off that pile and, and loading it in your vehicle. Uh, but try and watch for wood that has a similar coloration. And in a small mill, they're usually cutting from one log at a time. So you'll typically get wood that's in the same part of a pile that's all from the same tree and that's good because you don't want to get wild color variations because it's very hard to match that wood, especially if you're making larger furniture projects. Now one of the questions I always ask when I go to the mill is do you have any shorts? And shorts are wood that they cut that is shorter than usually the six or the eight foot that they normally have. And if they have that, sometimes they're willing to get rid of that at a little bit less price because not everybody wants short wood like this. And in my case, it was perfect. So just another little tip to watch for when you go to the mill. Well, that concludes my video on buying lumber direct from the mill. Uh, lots of little tips that you can do. And there's an article on Woodwork Web that will give you even more detail. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next segment. You may even want to subscribe. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.